Uh, my name is Laura and I'm one of the community managers over in the Coursera community. Um, the Coursera community is free. It's a free kind of gathering place for people to um, get support with their learning and life goals. And uh, the URL is www.coursera.community. So uh, this is a one hour webinar with uh, Professor Randy Lavick. And the webinar is Building Your Professional Persona. Uh, please stay muted during this webinar so we don't have any background noise. And please use the Q&A box to share any questions that you might have for Professor Lavick. Uh, the webinar will be recorded and a link to the recording will be sent to you. So without further ado, our guest today is Randy Lavick. He is an expert in digital marketing and how to use consumer and business big data to define, target, and develop high value markets. He's an instructor at Northwestern University and he helped Northwestern to develop the Coursera online specializations in social media marketing and content strategy for professionals. Um, they are some of the largest online programs on content and marketing in the world. He's also founder and CEO of a consulting company called Marketing Synergy. Welcome, Professor Lavick. Thank you so much, Laura. Uh, shall I sh uh, share my screen? Yep, take it away. All right. Let me see if this, uh, we're up there. Can you see it? Laura, can you see it? Yes, I can see it. Okay, all right. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Randy Lavik. Um, one of the things that uh, I wanted to talk about when, they, when Coursera asked me to do a webinar was building your professional persona. One thing I've noticed is that when I work with a new client through my company or working with students, I notice that people are working really hard and under a lot of pressure to put out great content. And as a result, they don't do it very often. Oftentimes they don't market it very well. And so what happens is it really um, becomes a stress on the company. And so I watch a lot of companies, they'll do blogging for a few months and then they just stop. Or they, they spend a lot of time to put together a great video. They market it a couple times and then they just kind of give up on it. And what I want to show you is that there's an easy way to do this with minimal effort to create a lot of content that you can curate and create. And I want to take you through the step-by-step -step methodology that we use at Northwestern and that I use with my clients as we go forward. Uh, first off, I want to really uh, just briefly say I've got laryngitis, so I'll be drinking some tea as we go through. Um, but uh, uh, I apologize, I just sound a little hoarse. So one of the things that I wanna do in the webinar is accomplish five things. First, I wanna to talk to you about the importance of themes that are your target markets uh, journeys that they're looking for information on. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, I give you some tools to identify themes and some strategies that work really well. Then once we've identified what they're looking for in the world, then what we wanna do is to find the influencers who are talking to them. And what they're gonna do is if we find, as we find them and then engage with them by following them, it'll give you a rich soup of information on themes of interest to your target markets, not necessarily your area of expertise, but things they wanna learn about. Um, and it'll be coming into your site so you can begin to curate content. So then I'll show you how to curate and essentially amplify the content from these influencers to engage your target markets and give you some tips as to how to do that. Then we're gonna talk about how to use the best expert content that you found to actually create some content of your own. And I'll give you three strategies that work really well for that. And then, uh, and then rhythm builds revenue. So we'll talk about once you create <coughs> something you really need to market it and remarket it. And so we'll talk about how to set up a pacing to do that, to maximize your investment in the content you're curating and the content you, you're creating. But as uh, I like to do in my classes, I'm gonna start off by throwing a curve at you. 
Have you ever heard of Moore's Law? Well, Moore's Law was created by Gordon Moore back in 1965. And he noticed that the number of transistors per square inch on integrated circuits doubled every two years. The interesting part about this is not only has it doubled every two years, but it's doubled every two years since then. So if you think about that, here's the actual graph for Moore's Law. And I want you to notice two things with it. The first thing is, look what happened to the acceleration. I mean, it starts off, it's just minuscule. And then all of a sudden it explodes into this huge rise. The second thing I want you to notice is when did that happen? And it really happened around 2007. In fact, 2007 had a huge impact on business in, in total because it changed everything. And so one of the things that's interesting is that while Moore's Law is dealing with transistors, it also has a huge impact and the same thing has happened with technology, with government, with uh, the environmental concerns. And so it's really impacted a lot of things. Moore's Law is not just about transistors, it's about tech. And so I heard a talk at the uh, World of Watson in 2016 by Thomas Friedman that really clarified it. He said, if you go back to 2017, there is a hockey stick acceleration that happened in three areas that changed everything for business. And so the three areas that changed it, uh, everything in 2007 is first, it's connectivity. What happened is connectivity became faster, cheaper, and ubiquitous. And we moved from dial-up to cordless and wireless. And if you go back to 2007, the iPhone was introduced, all the Android's phones were introduced. We moved to a wireless technology. And essentially, everybody in the world became connected and was able to share information. The second major thing that happened is we had a huge increase in capacity. Cloud computing and big data systems came online. Uh, IBM introduced Hadoop. We have AI, we have natural language processing. We have these big data systems that are going on. Um, and as a result, we were able to cost plummeted and Kate technologies picked up so we could then address the human genome. We could begin looking at solar capacity and things like that and begin to analyze big data sets online. So cloud computing and the online big data became a, uh, a words that we used. And finally, we increased in capabilities. So World Wide Web allowed people to connect up with people as well as to use social media to begin to build communities and talk to each other. 2007 was marked by Facebook and Twitter starting up. We had a, a lot of forums and bulletin boards, which are the start of community. Group collaboration began to happen, especially around things like the human genome. And all of it started in 2007. But if you recall the, the sweeping up curve, everything has been exploding since then. And so what's happened is we've not only connected up and it's really taken off since 2007, but we've also gone multimedia. And so in our world, we have to think about that as marketers. And so what's happened is I like to use this, uh, in, it's in the, in the course, uh, the Coursera course, but essentially because we could go multimedia, that's what people did. And so if you think about the social pyramid, at the top, we have the social networks, uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, VK, uh, Tencent, WeChat, where conversations around topics are very, very transient. At the next level down, we have the news aggregators. And then below that, we have the patient communities like Instagram, Pinterest, and things like that. Audio and video is becoming massive and huge. And so YouTube uh, is a leader here in the United States. We have our websites. Then we have thought leaders who are bloggers and e-newsletters, making e-newsletters. We'll talk about them as we go forward. And at the bottom, we have the virtual communities. The key is this explosion of connectivity allows us to talk on multi-levels, on multimedia, about things that are of interest to us. And the reason that I created the pyramid 
is that at the bottom you have very deep conversations about a topic um, like AI or uh, whatever, or fashion or whatever. And at the top you have these really quick transient um, discussions where people say, hey, link to there, link to there, go to there to learn about it. And so the social uh, pyramid is really a result of what started in 2007 and is going faster and faster and faster every single year in terms of its capabilities. And so what does this create for our challenge to our target markets? I really like this quote, getting information off the internet is like taking a drink from a fire hydrant. You know, essentially what's happened is I can get information from anywhere but I don't know if it's good information. If I don't know if it's fake news or if it's coming from a sales rep versus someone who's truly an expert. And so what you need to, what we are looking for is a place where we can get really good information about the things that are important to us as a community. And that's where the influencer comes in. And so what's going on is we really need somebody and this is one of my catchphrases, but I really like it, to filter and focus us on the things that we need to know. In other words, filter through content and focus us on the great stuff that we really need to uh, address our passions or to um, you know, help us as we are building our businesses. And so it really comes across that um, trust really does matter. I find this statistics from a 2016 analysis really interesting. 92% of consumers trust recommendations from other people, even if they don't know them, over brand content. And so we're trying to connect up and, and we're, we're looking at reviews and ratings as a way of making a decision as opposed to listening to the brand content provided by a company. So that says you need to help them. 70% uh, of consumers uh, reported online reviews are their second most trusted source. And so in business, we need to let them help give ourselves reviews because that becomes very important in the decision process. 47% of readers consult blogs to find new trends. 35% of US readers look to blogs to discover new products. And 20% of women are active on social media or motivated to consider products. And so the key is that this explosion of connectivity, explosion of capabilities, We've now begun to rely on each other through communities to begin to, to learn what we need to know to prosper in today's uh, digital world. So here's my first point um, is help, don't sell. Find out what your target market wants. What are the, the themes that are driving them? And then help them to achieve their goals, to get into the information stream. So one of the things I want to emphasize to you is you don't have to be an expert at everything. You just have to find the experts. And so what you want to do is to talk to your high value markets. They're on a journey either to address their passions or to address trigger events that are impacting their lives. So find out what it is in their plate of themes that they're looking for to, to move forward. What are they exploring and how are they exploring them? Uh, what are the hot topics that they want to learn more about? And interview them and constantly read influencer content to curate it and better understand the trends. The key is that I find a lot of companies only look at the trends in the discussion with their uh, high value customers that relate to their company. But that's not what you want. For example, one of my clients uh, makes hair products for women and they want to uh, influence CEOs that are women. And they want, especially startups. Well, if you think about it, what's on their plate is they're not just concerned about hair products or beauty products, but how do I dress as a pro? What should I wear? What sort of uh, accoutrements should I have? And then there's other sorts of business topics that are of interest to them. You need to think about all the themes that are important to them, some of which you're expert in, some of which you know something about, some of which you may not know a lot about, but all of those are important to your target market. So you wanna understand what are the things they're considering in the journey that they're on, okay? And then what we're gonna do is I'll show you some tools to help you do that. One of the tools is uh, Answer the Public. 
Um, we won't do it live, but this man is always yelling at you to put something in. But what you can do is you can put a theme into the box. You hit, uh, you know, search for it. And what it will do is it will come back with several circles. I put in artificial intelligence. And around here are all the questions that people are currently searching for in the area of artificial intelligence. And so what I want to know is where, the, what are they talking about? Where are they looking? What countries are, are participating? And things like that. Answer the Public gives you this information for free. So I would type in artificial intelligence, then I might do AI, I might do machine learning, other things that are terms that are related. And I wanna see what they're looking at. The other thing is with this service, you can uh, either look at it as a circle or you can actually download it as search terms. And so it actually shows you what they're searching for. So in addition to talking to my high value customers, I look here to get some insights. And I'll also look at Google Trends to get some insights as to there. And so here I'm looking at artificial intelligence versus AI versus machine learning versus natural language processing. I can look at where it is over the, in countries. I'm looking at it right now in terms of volume. And what I want to know is what are they basically searching for uh, to answer questions around the themes that are important to them. Hi, Professor, yes. Professor Lavik. Yes. Uh, it's Laura. I just wanted to share a question that somebody asked. Sure. Um, uh, Daniela has asked, sometimes the cell behind the help is so obvious that it turns off potential customers. Any thoughts on how to avoid this? Um, yeah, which, well, what, the thing you want to do is I try not to sell at all. The key is, uh, you know, in today's world, it's help, 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 not sell, sell, sell. Here's my strategy. Make them, make them rely on you because you're a constant source of information that's beyond your company, but it's into their themes that are of importance to them. And when they're ready to buy, they're going to know you. You're going to be the first place to go. And so um, let me give you a quick example. One of my clients uh, sells power supplies. And one of the things that they did is they wanted to uh, engage with CEOs. So we put together a secret webinar that was by invitation only. It does we meet once a quarter. They never talk about power supplies. They talk about anything that the CEO wants to talk about um, in their area of interest. And so we talk about, um, you know, the environment and, Back in the day, we had one on Obamacare and things like that. And the key was when the co contracts came up to buy power supplies, they were on the inside track because the CEO and the CFO knew them well. And so you don't have to sell all the time. That does turn people off. Just give them information. Just give them the value that you can bring to them by finding things of interest in their um, the themes in their high value, the high value markets interested in, and that will, you know, show them that you really care about them as an individual, not as a prospect. So because I'm an old professor, I'm old and I'm a professor, I give you assignments. Your first assignment is this, talk to some people in your high value market and identify five to 10 themes of interest for them. Um, you know, what are the things that they think about day to day to improve their, uh, their um, professional interests? And so what are they looking for, you know, and, and what's in that suite, that basket of things that they want? Um, again, it's way beyond your company, but it's things that they want. We can find the influencers to get information, even though you have no expertise or very little expertise in it. So when I think about marketing, I want to, I, I tend to be very technical. So I want to know about AI and, uh, you know, genetic algorithms and big data, data systems and cloud computing. But I also need to know about creative and how to do podcasts and how to create videos and how to do vlogging. I don't know those as well, but I know experts in those areas that I can, that I can read and follow. And so that's what you want to do. Find the themes that they find interesting 
and vital to them. And then put that down and then we'll go to the next step. The next step is to find the influencers and the communities. Uh, basically, we around different themes create communities. And communities can be either virtual using hashtags or they can be actual physical places like on Facebook. And if you look at a community at the center, you have the experts. And then the bigger group, the group that you really want to target are the influencers. These are people who talk to the experts and write blogs and videos and do podcasts that explain what's going on. And they establish the themes and the topics within the community. That then goes out to the members. And so the influencers are the bridge that you want to do. And so what you want to do is you want to get a, a linked up with them um, to um, become a part of the community. I've got a video out there you can, you can view later. But basically, we're addressing our passions. As a professional, I want to be a good teacher. So I'm always looking for things that are around my passion of education. But there are also trigger events that happen new technologies come online. And so I'm always looking for different things that uh, will help me be better at what I do. And so here's two really good tools for you to use. The first one is called Follower Wonk. It's free. And if you notice down here where I clicked on search bios, the most followed people on, this is on Twitter, are Katy Perry and Justin Bieber. And we don't need to follow them. But what you do is you punch in a theme that you want. And if you notice, I put in artificial intelligence. Um, and what it gives me are, by rank, the most important and influential companies and people in this area. Now, I don't tend to follow companies. I might follow uh, IBM or their Watson product. But, I'm not, but I will go through and find the really influential people. And what you, all you need to do is if you have a Twitter account, which you should, just click on the follow button, follow three to five of them, and see what they are, uh, what they're interested in. You'll notice as we go down the page, there's Quebec uh, AI, there's also one from China. So it's international. You can see how many followers they have and how many people, uh, what their authority is. And the really nice part about this is you could go through and quickly build uh, a set of followers in all of the different theme areas that your uh, client's interested in, and that information will be flowing in to your uh, Twitter site. Then what you wanna do is take the individuals, if you really find they put out quality stuff, then also follow them on LinkedIn, also follow them on Instagram, and start building out your communities that way. So Follower Wong is a great tool to use just to get started because you can learn a lot about them. And the key thing is if you follow them and as we're going to talk about, you retweet them or amplify their messages, they'll get to know you. And for example, if you uh, went out to the first person and the Carl Icahn who you know happened to tweet out something you wrote, it's going to go to 365,000 people which is uh, pretty cool. And we've had students that have done things like that to get out to grow their base really fast because they were retweeted by a heavy duty influencer. I have a, another question for you here. Uh, Kate is asking whether by influencers you mean thought leaders. Yes, whether well, thought leaders or they're really good interviewers and people who can, yeah, help interpret and make it easier to understand what the experts are telling them. And they're sort of assimilators, they're thought leaders. Yeah, I, but the key is they influence a large community of people that have the, if they're, the, they're probably your target market. And so they're the ones you wanna to talk to. Okay, thank you. and. I just want to um, make a quick note that some of the questions that, that are coming in, we will save uh, for the end of the presentation. So um, don't worry if you've asked a question and I don't read it out loud, we will get to it. Um, so thanks for your patience. Yep. Go you. ahead. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, the next one's Buzz Sumo. I use this a lot. You can do it by time and you can also do it by country and things. And you not only can get content, what's recently been published around a theme, but also the influencers. And so this is, I put in artificial intelligence. Here are some recent uh, publications. It shows you how many followers the, the individual who is the author have. It shows you their total engagements. And it also has their evergreen score as to how much of an authority they are on the subject. And so this uh, gives you a lot of really useful things that I take a lot of these. And if it's something really new, I'll retweet it out uh, to my audience saying, hey, have you seen this article? And I give credit to the author, to the publication, and to the, um, to the article itself, and uh, retweet it out. The other thing you could do is you can click on influencers, and it too will give you the influencers across the world on a given topic area. And so your second assignment is, is I want you to follow three to five influencers per major theme of interest to your high value market and read their stuff and bring it in. Um, you know, the, the best way to do it is, if it's not your area of expertise, become an influencer by finding and filtering through the stuff, find the good stuff, and then tweet it out to your audience. Every time you do that, you'll grow your audience. I've grown my audience by 10 people today I haven't done anything. Um, they just come in. The next one is uh, Amplify Smartly. This is a really key um, um, quote. Um, basically, content curation is the process of sorting through vast amounts of content on the web and presenting it in a meaningful and organized way around a specific theme. And so what it really means is not creating content but finding great stuff to curate to your audience by helping them. And so we call that amplification. If you ever want to see amplification at work, think of the social pyramid and the tweet by Donald Trump, our president, will produce tons of multimedia commentary, positive and negative. And if suddenly it becomes his tweet will become amplified a million times over by the social communities. And the same thing happens in, for our profession. We amplify things that are of interest to us. And so one of the things you need to think about is when you do this, you have to use hashtags and the ad handles, and you need to use them always. So with hashtags are the ways that we identify themes. It's a way that virtual communities form. And so you wanna use them to attract people to your content and it really maximizes the impact. So I could say, here's a great article on AI, but if it make it hashtag AI, hashtag artificial intelligence, I go out to communities that are searching for their well beyond the people that are following me. Ad handles identify individuals, companies, and communities. So a lot of my tweets, I'll say, at NU social marketing, at NU content strategy, at NU Sports Marketing, because it takes me out to all of those communities. So it gives acknowledgement to the people that are experts. It also shows them that you're interested in them. And so I'll, if I uh, get something, say, from Eric Qualman, I'll say, great article from at Equalman that goes to him. A lot of times he'll thank me, which gives me more power, and back and forth we go. It's part of give to get. If you want to get followers, Give kudos to the influencers that are there before you and curate the best. If you're following someone and they aren't your quality, quit following them. That's the best way to do it. And so what you want to do is here's two tools you can use. Uh, the first one's called Write Tag. And what you do is it likes you to log in, but you don't have to. Just go up to the search for hashtags at the top. Type in a hashtag. And what it does is it shows you the related hashtags that are being used on Twitter, as well as on Instagram. Remember, hashtags and ad handles are used on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And so it gives you all of those. Then what it does is it shows you 
a circle of all the possible hashtags that are related to artificial intelligence. I don't spend a lot of time out on the rim, but those in the center are important to me because I'll use those in a tweet. The other one I like to use is KW Finder. These are all free. You notice you can do it by language and you put in any keyword that you want and it will go through, oops, I didn't do that, sorry. What it will go through and give you is the um, actual keywords that are being used and it'll show you the volumes and all the information behind it. So it gives you a lot of great information. So let me show you about using hashtags and ad handles. The Seth Redmore is one of the experts that we have in our social media marketing uh, course. And he wrote a really good um, article. They're, they're putting out a new product called Micro Models that is part of natural language processing. So here's what he put out. Now I could have just retweeted it, but instead I retweeted it with a comment. And so I say today, Hashtag companies need to understand hashtag NLP to develop hashtag AI solutions to drive their business models. Adlexalytics has pioneered hashtag machine learning methodology and so forth. What I'm doing is I'm talking to Lexalytics people, Seth Redmore people, and people that are looking at natural language processing, NLP, AI, and all those different terms. Those are all communities. So when I sent this out, a lot of people responded and a lot of people retweeted it. So my, I amplified Seth Redmore using the hashtags and the ad handles amplified me. And that, you, that works on any of the systems. I could also take this exact message and put it over on LinkedIn to send it out. Or I could also go over to Instagram and they too have hashtags and I could broadcast it out there too. So amplification is a great way to do it. And using the hashtags and the ad handle really makes it work. And so one of the things I tell, so I work with a, a lot of startups at Northwestern, is that basically you should have probably 90% curated content to 10% created at the start because you can build your base, your followers. Then when you put out your created content, you've got a big audience there to do it. So what I want you to do is to identify five hashtags for each theme. And so think about artificial intelligence as AI, it's machine learning. And so think about the abbreviations we use and these tools will tell you what, to, what are the good hashtags to use. And then also when you are following your uh, influencers, look at what they use and that'll give you more and more knowledge. The more you can use it, the better because it, Take something you're investing your time in and makes it much more effective. The next thing is you can create awesome content using curated content. And so what people are looking for to be an awesome content is there's a consistency to your messaging. You're keeping it going at, at a very sustainable rate. It's relevant to them. You can sustain it over time. It's timely and it's useful. So I've got three quick uh, ideas that work really well for using content. The first one is a filter and focus blog. Here's what you do. For a given theme that's of importance to your market, but you may not have a lot of expertise in it, find two great articles or videos or podcasts. And what you do is you create a blog where you start off with a great title and then in paragraph one, you just give them two sentences. One is you talk directly to the person. You say, as a CEO in marketing, you know that artificial intelligence solutions are becoming more and more used. Then you say, um, as a CEO of uh, my company, Marketing Synergy, I have several experts in AI, and I found two really interesting articles I think you should, you, you'll find very valuable. So then in that first paragraph, I do four to five sentences about summarizing article one. I'd be sure I put in backlinks to the author, to their LinkedIn page, to the publication, and to the actual article itself. That gives me a lot of firepower in terms of search engines finding me. Then I put in a great graphic and I, I'll find them on the internet. 
I send a message to the owner, ask if it's okay. If they say it's okay, I put it in. Then I do the second article, uh, same way I did the first. Then I create three bullet points. And then bullet points are things that I say, basically having read this, here are three action items I would recommend you consider the next time you're thinking about AI. And I always like them to be three words. You know, um, you know think, think uh, you know, think of programming or, you know, give to get or things like that. Very simple, easy to understand. We summarize them and everybody wins. If you want to see these at work, I give this as an assignment to some of my students and some of their filter focus blogs have actually gotten them jobs at companies like Forbes. And so um, if you go out to NU Social IMC, you can read about 200 of them on all sorts of topics from microloans to artificial intelligence to whatever the students are into, and it'll show you how to do them. A second, a, oh, go ahead. Oh, yep, hi, I have a couple questions for sure. you that are related to this. Um, Eric has asked, how do you determine a great title? I'm wondering what tools you'd recommend. Oh, well, first off, you have, there's a lot of blogger, uh, I use, we use blogger ourselves at Northwestern. Um, in terms of the title, what I like to do is start with the target market. So I'll say CEO colon. Um, three recommendations when you're thinking about putting artificial intelligence into your company. So I, I give them, I make sure they understand there's three recommendations. I give them the title and I always put the number three because that gives you a little bit better search. And then I just tell them what it's about. So that's how I do titles, pretty straightforward. Again, go out to the uh, Edu Social IMC and you'll see dozens and dozens, well, you'll see hundreds of them. Okay, and then uh, another question here, I'm a small, from David, I'm a small business owner looking at moving my blog from standalone to website. Am I going to encounter any intellectual property challenges reposting? Um, well, if you're, if you're concerned about that, before you do the article, send it to the uh, authors and ask them for their permission. They like it because you're actually publishing and backlinking to them, which improves their SEO. If you say, you never say anything that's a judgmental, you just give them the facts. And so if you're worried about that, check with uh, the authors, but I've never had one turned down for my students or for me. Uh, a quick follow-up, uh, what, what was the reference to a site related to blog posting that you... Um, yeah, if you go to, at the very bottom here, I have the so, NU Social IMC blog. We've been running this for uh, about seven years. And so this is where the students actually put this filter and focus blog up. And so you'll actually see actual blog articles in this exact structure. Thank you. Sure. Another thing you could do is uh, have you use curator sourced research to create your own research. Um, this came from uh, Orbit Media and Andy Crestadina. What he said was a lot of companies are putting out research, but a lot of small businesses don't have the time. So find a topic or a theme of interest Find research that's been published by your influencers that you like, and then go ahead and pull together two or three of them, analyze them to make major findings and some of the nuances of it, and write a summary of it for your, on your blog or do a video and a blog of it. And then, you know, give the reader some action items to consider at the end and pull it together. So it's a form of filter and focus using aggregated existing research to do it, to, to give people a new insight that they maybe haven't seen before on a theme that maybe your area of expertise or close to it, but the, it certainly uses the influencers uh, to curate the research for you. A third one I like to do is a trend post. Um, I just put out my 2019 digital marketing predictions but what I did is I went to my um, follower base of people I uh, find as experts 
and I looked at what they were predicting as important for the next year. If you notice all the way through my, my uh, blog posting, I have links to Gartner studies and blog posts and other things. So I'm using them to justify the recommendations I'm making for 2019. So I'll publish that. Then in July, I'll review it to see where I need to make adjustments or admit mistakes, things I missed, and then do it again for the next year. It's a great way to create a lot of buzz, create a lot of backlinks, which give you your website credibility. And it also um, generates a lot of discussion. So identify one content element you could create each month for your high value markets. The final one is rhythm builds revenue. So we should be right on time. So one of the things that I find is that a lot of people spend time building content or creating content or curating it, but then they kind of just stop marketing it. And so one of the things I would advise you to do is to market your content aggressively. In other words, use different messages, but put it out there every couple of days and then put it out there for a couple of weeks, then rest it, then do it again and rest it because your market is huge. And oh, I've got a typo in here, but anyway, your market is huge and they don't see it all the time. And so you're gonna to get to a new audience by doing it at different times of the day and doing it over time. And then take it and let's say I write something, I put out a blog, I will market it over and over on Twitter. I will also market it on LinkedIn, put it out on Instagram, I'll go to community sites and other platforms and tell them about it and I'll get it out as far as I can. I'll also, you know, I may even point it towards a certain uh, influencer to let them know I'm doing it. And then the key is if it's still relevant content, two or three months later, do it again. You know, again, you're not gonna penetrate the whole market and they haven't seen it. And so one of the things I find is that for my students is we'll go through a couple months and as we remarket it, we get just a stronger response as we did the first time. So feel free to do that. Um, so here's kind of the model we use. If you create content, market it everywhere. If you curate content, amplify it with hashtags and comments, and then remarket it periodically if it's still relevant, and reuse it to create new content like the uh, filter and focus blogs. And then what you do is you talk about it everywhere. You're spending time to gather curated and created content. Use the model and don't be afraid to market it to get people aware of the fact that you've done this. And so one of the things I like from Andy Cressadine is the three minute rule. I use this at breakfast around uh, dinner time and then while I'm watching the Blackhawks play, I read the influencer stuff that's flowing in. I find the great stuff. Then I take it out and if I like it, I will send it out to my readers using the hashtags and ad handles and really nice words about it to get the, uh, to amplify their stuff. And if you do that using really strong influencers, your base will grow every single day. So for each created uh, content, plan four to five days of marketing, pause, then do it again for another couple of days pause and then maybe let it go a month and then do it again to maximize your stuff, to maximize your impact. To help you, here's some free videos that I put together. I use these in my classes. They're also embedded into the um, Coursera social media marketing specialization. And I've given you a Word doc where you can just click on these. They're basically training videos as to how to do it. And then finally, I'd like to conclude with this. Here are the mantras we use in my class. Give to get. If you want to be looked at as an expert, you have to earn it. So give respect to the people that are there now and you know, um, retweet the really good influencers and amplify their stuff. Filter and focus. I'm, un I'm inundated by content. Filter it and give me the great stuff I need. 
thinking multimedia engagement. You know, I, I like to, if I write a blog, I oftentimes would embed one of these videos I've made. You know, think about how you can mix and match. You don't necessarily, like, let's say you have a great blog, you can do a short video on YouTube about the blog and then give them the link to read it. Communities are, and influencers rule the world. So, you know, pay homage to them. And then everything's evolving. Again, we're all on the, uh, you know, uh, the, the Moore's, you know, hockey stick accelerations. So uh, just understand that that's happening and be a part of it. So um, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll open up for questions and um, sh I'll stop the share. Is that okay, uh, Laura? Yeah, that's great. There we go. Okay, so uh, one of the questions that came in uh, during the presentation, uh, let me just pull it up here. Sure. Shang Lin has asked, as you mentioned, we are in the connected age today. What are your thoughts on how business will be affected once we transit into the data age? And how will 5G impact the market? I think we're going to, we're, we're in a world, um, and uh, incidentally, I gave you the, the link to the uh, 2016 World of Watson discussion by um, Thomas Friedman. One of the things he talks about is we are into a world of constant acceleration and constant disruption now. And so what's gonna happen is we're going to have to get, we're gonna be more connected. If you read the uh, recent Wired uh, a magazine it has a great article on the mirror world and how VR is going to take over and we're going to move from text to uh, videos and audio and then we're going to move to photonic or uh, photogenic world and you know so we just need to be flexible and that's why you need an influencer base to keep up with the new topics and the new things that are coming online because it's going to change everything. Great. And uh, I have a few questions here uh, from Heather. Uh, as LinkedIn changes from a purely career networking platform to more of a media share platform, how should professionals use it to promote their professional persona? And what is considered appropriate content to share or create for LinkedIn? Um, that's a good question. One of the things I like to do is if I publish a blog on my website, I'll also publish the same blog on LinkedIn. I find it gets to a very different audience. And so I will put that over there. I also find really great stuff on Twitter. I will take to LinkedIn. Great stuff I find on LinkedIn, I'll take to Twitter because they're different audiences. And so I'm always looking for curated content as well as cre created content that I can bring both ways and use it. And that helps me build my follower base without trying to sell stuff. Okay, and uh, what do you see as the next big growth social media platform? What is on the horizon that social media marketers and professionals need to be early adopters of in order to stay up to speed? Well, the first thing is that the markets are always changing. When I started my course at Northwestern, I started talking about Facebook. And the students said, no, not Facebook, it's MySpace. Don't you understand? And it's a, what is it, third world or whatever. And uh, it's like, no, we're always moving on. I think younger people, you're seeing an erosion of Facebook in the younger audiences because they're moving on. I think the next big thing though to watch out for is this new privacy regulations. At some point, people are going to say, look, I want everything encrypted and I wanna protect myself. You know, so um, basically I keep watching that to see what's going on. I, I spent a lot of time talking to people who are experts on privacy in Europe and watching some of the lawsuits that are coming out of France I think that's gonna have an impact on this whole media um, machine that we put together here in the United States. Okay. Uh, 
Thank you all for your questions. They're great questions and I'm just uh, trying to make sure that I, I capture them all. Uh, Shui has asked, should I post the same or similar co content um, on each, uh, each uh, I think, ch social media channel for a time or should I make some differences in, in that content? Or does it depend on the effect that I want? I, I would, well, it depends on the effect you want, but I will take a great piece of content that I spent time creating and I'll put it out multiple places. For example, one of my clients is really good. They love to make videos. So they put them up on YouTube and then they leave them there. And I take them and say, let's embed them into a blog or let's talk in the, in, let's do a podcast about what you put into the video and why you did it. And so think multimedia, and you may use the same thing over and over, or you may use some platforms to market it and some platforms to host it. Okay, and a question from Lino. Uh, the Facebook, fo uh, Facebook founder recently announced changes coming to move the platform more to an intimate sharing one as opposed to a public, a square approach. How will this impact be felt? Well, I think it's, I think where you're going to see some foundational changes with the privacy regulations. And I think that but they, they still have public and private and secret communities on Facebook. It's still a place where people aggregate to talk about the things they're concerned about. So Facebook should be a part of your strategy, especially finding the communities on it as a place to put your uh, content or become a part of that community. Okay, and uh, question here from David. I'm always irritated when I get stopped by a paywall, particularly from, um, from a media source. Yeah. I typically wouldn't follow. Any rules like don't share items behind a paywall or make, sh or make sure you share uh, quote subscribed, sub sorry, share yeah. quote subscription required, unquote. Yeah. Okay, let, let me get, that's a good, good question. First off, I don't do anything behind, I don't want to go behind paywalls, especially if I don't like them. And if I'm following somebody who is uh, an influencer, but they're a jerk or I don't agree with them, I get rid of them. You know, I don't try to stay, you know, fight them. If you, the way you do a paywall is if you have a great piece of, of content, you can put it behind a registration wall to make people register and then you give them the link. Okay, kind of like what we did with this webinar. That works. Paywalls get really difficult because you're asking me for money. And I know that the newspapers are struggling with this concept of, you know, making people pay for it. It's a tough sell. I would not use it myself. I don't think that's a good, you know, strategy. I like people who are like um, uh, the... Uh, People that are really into videos and things say, look, give it away and people will come back when they're ready to, uh, you know, need your counseling. And I think that strategy works really well. Okay. Uh, Linda has asked, what is one of the most impressive experiences or opportunities your students have had as a result of taking your social media marketing specialization a series of classes? Um, that's, it's really neat. Um, one of the things I get is a lot of feedback after they've graduated from the specialization. A number of people have started new careers. Um, some have created their own businesses, like one in Zaire um, does safaris, and they use social media and what they learned in class to get to their audience that wants to go on you know, photo, photogenic uh, safaris. Um, it's kind of neat. Um, I have a student in Denmark who has started her own business uh, in it. A number of people have gone into careers in social media or consulting. And so it's really neat to see how people have done it and how they've used it throughout the world 
to connect up with the people they want to get connected with and to grow. Okay, and uh, another question from Heather here. How or when do you think chatbots will enter the personal realm of social media, starting to change the way our professional personas are managed? Well, chatbots is an AI are, are huge right now. Um, and I think they're gonna to continue to be huge. Um, I've seen a forecast that by 2020, over half of all conversations will not be done with human to human, but it'll be human to chatbot. And so I think for the standard questions, for things you get a lot of, um, using a chatbot is a great way to do it. We're looking to how to use it at Northwestern in education and also to help our entrepreneurs, you know, um, do it the right way. And so I think chatbot and AI is where everything's going to go. And so it's important to find the influencers and to keep up on those um, because it's, it's really a fast evolving thing. If you think about it, two years ago, we were talking about AI theoretically, and now it's all over the place. And so that's that idea of that hockey stick acceleration. Moore's law is happening right now. Okay, I think, oh, wait, one more question. Okay. <laughs> um, Bahar has asked, can you give me any special recommendation for launching an educational page about marketing for luxury industries? Thank you. Um, yeah, here's what I do. I'd go out and I'd find the influencers who are talking about luxury industries and I'd see what they're talking about. Um, I'd see how they're educating the people. Um, I talk to some people that are in the luxury group and talk about what is it you are looking for? You know, what sort of information do you, uh, to keep you up at night? You know, what are you, what are the things you're worried about? Give them that content, educate them with that. Use the influencers to build your, the wealth of your content and, um, you know, build the community that way. Don't think of it as just you doing stuff. Think of it as making the community happen. I can't hear you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I think that we'll, we'll close now, but I I'll encourage all of you to continue to engage with this content. You can do that over in the Coursera community, which is free. Uh, and I will be sharing uh, a URL in the follow-up email that I'll be sending you. Uh, you will get in that email a link to the recording of this webinar. Uh, the slide deck will be uploaded as a PDF to this post in the community. And you'll also have a Word document there that contains all the sources, at, you know, the, the websites, uh, the URLs that uh, Professor Lavek included in his presentation today. Yeah, one more thing, um, a shameless plug. In two weeks, we're going to have another one of these webinars. It is going to be on how to build a, an effective digital strategy using a technique that was pioneered by Google and YouTube called Hero Hub and Help. It's really a great strategy. I'll show you how we teach it and how my clients use it to build a holistic digital marketing strategy. Right, thank you. Yes, we will have details. Uh, Professor Lavrek will actually be doing three more webinars uh, with the Coursera community. And uh, details are over in the community. It's www.coursera.community. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you do have any follow-up questions, please feel free to post them there. Um, Professor Lavrek is uh, in the community and he'll be checking for your questions and uh, looking forward to um, answering more questions if you have them. Uh, I, I went ahead and I shared uh, the assignments that he included in the webinar in the chat box and uh, again I will be sending a follow-up email to everybody and uh, the links and, and everything you'll need will be in there. Any, anything else to add? Well, thank you very much. I really enjoyed talking with you.
Yes, I, I agree. Thank you all for joining us today. And I look forward to uh, continuing to, to talk with you all over in the community. And uh, I hope to see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.